Hey friends, welcome back to the channel and another episode of how to build an editor with Emacs Lisp. In the previous episode, we talked about conditionals in Elisp. Uh, we have a, we had a look at like some famous forms like if, when, uh, but like conventionally, the next step for us would be to talk about loops in a programming language. But in order to do that, we need to learn more about one of the fundamental data structures in any Lisp, which is lists. So that's what we're going to do today. It would be a, like a brief introduction to lists. We're going to talk, uh, to talk about what is a list and like some of the functions, like useful functions to uh, interact with the list. So <clears throat> first of all, what is a list? It might be a surprise to you uh, to know that actually a list is not a primitive type in Emacs Lisp. That means like by its like list on its own is created uh from other data like other primitive type like other uh, data structures um basically a list is a, just a linked list and a list is created out of con cells um so con cells on on their own are the primitive type here that like actually lists are made out of it's uh, it's a little bit hard for me to pronounce con cells so uh, bear with me. Um, but what is a console? Uh, by the way, if you don't know what is a linked list, um, if you Google it, you'll find plenty of resources. It's just uh, like a list of sales that are connected to each other. Each sale uh, point to another set, right? Uh, that's like really a short version and not a good one, actually. Uh, if you don't know about it, Google it. Uh, you'll learn uh, quite a lot about it. But what is a console? Console is a container of pairs. So each cell contains like a pair of elements. Um, it has a car and a cooler or CDR, right? Car refers to the head of the pair, like the first element, and cooler uh, refers to the tail or the second element in the uh, console. So, uh, Again, console is just a pair of elements, a head and a tail, or a car and a cooler. So let's uh, look at the diagram, actually. Um, yes. Okay. So as you can, like, it's really to uh, the, like think about a cell. It's just a pair of two elements, a head, and a tail. So if we want to actually come up with the ELISP code that represents that diagram, we can like have something like this. So the function cons is actually the constructor for con cells. It's the constructor for the type con cells, right? So if I evaluate this form, as you can see on the bottom left, uh, we get back a dotted notation for concepts. I'm going to talk about uh, the dotted notation like in a second. Uh, but actually, let me copy paste this thing here because I can do uh, more with it. So we define x1 to be a console with two elements, head and tail, two symbols actually, symbol head and symbol tail. There's a function car and there's a function cooler. If I run function car on x1, I get head back, which is like the first element in the cell. If I run cooler on x1, I get tail back. Easy. Um, the name car and cooler is like, at least to me, it seemed really weird, but there's a historical reason to, uh, to name that. I'm going to uh, include a link in the comment, in the description below. Uh, for you, like as a reference, why uh, the, like we use car and cooler as a name. Um, in other lists, like closure, there's like head and uh, sorry, first and rest, or first and uh, second, and stuff like that. Like easier to understand. But in in Elis, car and cooler, car is the first element, cooler is the second element on, on a uh, concept. So another way to actually create a console is by this notation. This is called the dotted notation. So we have to actually uh, 
quote this list obviously if we remove the quote here uh elis tries to find a function called head and call it right so we need to quote it and you probably notice the dot here that's the dotted notation for consoles so when we actually write this no uh, write in this notation the reader uh, read this expression as a console this is exactly equivalent to doing this right doing using cons function um since we already coded the list we don't have to code the symbol as well it, it already coded so we have a symbol head as the first element and symbol tail as the second element so um for example if i do car on this i'm going to get head back exactly like x1 so what if we uh, use cons to create a uh, console with nil as the tail as you can see on the bottom left it returns a list like an empty list with only number two in it so that nil as the tail element has a, like a, a special meaning Whenever we use nil as the cuder or the second element, elis reads it as a list. So we on, we already knows that we already know that a list is made out of consoles, right? So uh, a way to kind of uh, notify elis that this is the end of the list is to use nil as the tail of the last console. I'm going to show you uh, in a bit how it works. Um, another example here is to actually use cons to create, uh, like, to create a nested console. So, if I do, uh, use cons to actually uh, create a cons with one as the head element, as the first element, and another console as the second element, right? As you can see, I get a, like a list that has a console as the second element um actually uh here is a here's one thing that we should uh, keep in mind when we like when we attach cons to uh, together to form a list it should always end with a nil as the tail of the final step otherwise if we don't do that we're creating a, a another data structure which if i'm not mistaken it's called the cyclic list or something like that i never used it actually but that's what it is so right now i can do something like this right let's see how it works as you can see we have like a list of one element which is which has a list of two concepts okay um let's uh, move on so here's another uh, uh, schematic this is how actually a list work uh, a list works we already talked about uh, cells now what if the CUDA of a cell points to another cell so right now here we have number one as the head of this uh, cell here as the car of this head, uh, cell here and we use another cell as the cooler that um, that other cell has number two as the car and on its own cooler it has another cell again but the last cell contains a nil in its cooler right so to show it in action let me actually remove all this And copy paste this in here. Do, do, do. Actually, I can just run it there in the org file, but my shortcuts are made for the elis buffer. That's what I. That's why I'm um, moving it here. So let's have a look at x2. Let's create x2, right? So we have three cons, three cells. It's exactly the same as the diagram. We at the very first stage we cons number one to another console. So the second cons that I'm um, highlighting here is the second element of the first cell. On its own, 
it's a cell that contains two as the first uh, element and another console as the tail or the second element the last console just has three and name right when we evaluate it as you can see on the bottom left we get a list of three elements back and that's how exactly lists are made so uh, if we like use the list constructor to create a like a to create the same list but in a different using it the list function we get the exact same thing back right so that kind of shows how lists work in emacs list each list is made out of several cons and cons are connected to each other via the tail or the second element of each con each each con cell and the last cons always ends in nil right uh, that's how lists works. Um, cons on its own, like have an application of pairs, so you can use them as pairs. Obviously, I see so many people are using cons, which is obvious. Like it's a pair. Uh, you need pairs when you uh, program, right? So um, moving forward, um, let's talk about some of the useful functions that we can use and you might see in other people's source code that in order to interact with the list the first and most common one is add to list so um first of all let's copy this thing here um okay let's have a look at oops sorry do no let's have a look at its documentation first okay as you can see it's a native function so it's implemented in in c actually so it gets uh, uh gets a list and an element and some uh, other optional arguments it adds the element to the value of list bar, right? That's the most important thing here. So if we give it a shot, let's create a new list uh, called x4, and then we add three to the x4, right? It didn't change, right? As you can see on the bottom left, we still get back the same list. That's because number three is already part of this list here. But if we add six, as you can see, um we got a new list with number six added to the head of uh the list and that's how add lists work so whenever you want to add something to a list but only if it doesn't already ex uh, is a member of the list you can use add list uh, actually this reminds me of one of the main properties of a list that you need to be um, aware of so since lists are just linked lists, they're efficient from their head, right? So for example, if you're used to other programming languages that have arrays, when you have an array, you simply can point out to any element, like you have, a, you have an array of like 100 elements. You can simply ask like, I want the element number 90, right? No problem. But when you work with linked lists, it's a different story. In order to get a, get the 90th uh, element in a list, you have to actually uh, walk from the head and make your way to the 90th element and then do something with it. So bear that in mind, it's more efficient from the head. And in order to get to the 90th, uh, you have to traverse the list to that point. That being said, I'm, I'm not sure about this part, but usually in different program languages, like they create a, like a double linked list. So the list would be efficient from both sides, but still, if you want to get to the, to an element in, in the middle, you have to traverse to that element, right? It doesn't make a difference, but I, I'm not sure about the uh, ELISP implementation. I had to uh, look it up. Actually, uh, I'm going to do it for the next episode and let you know so bear in mind it's more efficient from 
the head. That's why when we add stuff to it, it gets added to the head. Basically, we create by doing this, we create a new console with number six as the head and the previous list as the um, tail. So that's how uh, add list work, add to list work works. Um, the next two functions are push and pop. Quite simple. Uh, as you can see here, we can actually define a new list, same as before, x5. Uh, but let's push one to x5. As you can see on the bottom left, it actually, whenever I evaluate it, it doesn't check whether one is already a member or not. It just push that, uh, push that element uh, as the new head of the x5 list, right? And pop is the quite opposite. It just pops ones out. So let's look at x5. We have three ones at the moment. If I evaluate pop one more time, two, three more times, and I get two, three, four, there's no one anymore. So uh, quite simple and useful. There's another function that is really handy. It's called member. What member does is to, like it checks whether or not um, like you can provide an argument like the first argument uh, and the list. It, it tries to figure out whether or not that argument exists, like is a member of that list. And if it does, uh, actually, sorry, I had to define x6 first. And if it does, if it doesn't, it returns nil. But if it does, it returns uh, returns a sub sub list or a subset kind of from the first occurrence of uh, one in that list. Um, quite simple. Like uh, you can use it with like like this to say when member. For example, four in X four, then message. So running this, actually, let me see. Oh yeah, I shouldn't quote this one. Uh, as you can see, it already exists, and we can say when not if it wasn't there, which returns name, right? So that's how, can, how you can actually uh, check for the existence of an element in a list. The next two functions are delete and remove, right? Delete and remove work the same way. One of them are uh, kind of destructive. It like manipulates the original list. The other one just return a copy with, without that element. Both of them have the same signature. They get uh, two elements, two arguments. The first one is the element you want to remove. And the second one is the list that you want that element to be removed from. Um, so let's give it a shot. For example, let's define X5 here. So, um, and then delete number three from uh, X7. Sorry, by the way, I said X5. And if we look at the X7 again, there's no tree in it. So delete is actually destructive. It uh, manipulates the original list. But remove works the same way. So X8, we remove number three. Uh, as you can see, it returns the list without number three in it. But if we look at X8, it still contains the number eight. Super simple. By the way, you can have a look at the documentation via control H F or describe function. Um, yep, remove, as you can see, um, I just want you to know that like the documentation of Emacs is pretty nice. Like I talked about it in the first or second episode. Um, always, always have a look at the function uh, documentation and the docker string to know how it works uh, i'm trying to keep the uh, episode short that why that's why i'm skipping some of it and uh, we talked about car and cooter earlier car returns the head of the list and cooter uh, sorry head uh, car returns the head of a console and cooter returns the tail of a console but what happens if we use car and cooter in context of a list Let's figure it out. 
starting out here. Actually, let's keep it these two are good examples. So we talked about that X2 and X3 are the same list. They both uh, are the same list with the same elements, but are constructed differently. One using cancels directly, the other one using list function. <coughs> Sorry. So what if we run car on X2? We get number one back. Obviously, cons, uh, we have a, a list is like a, a sequence of cons, uh, cons cells and car will, will return the first um, element in the first cons. But what happens if we run cooler on X2? We get a list back. So if we have a like closer look, and as I mentioned or, uh, earlier, a list is a sequence of cons. So the coder of the first con cell is kind of the rest of the list, right? Um, and if we try even like X3, we, we will get the same thing. So coder in, term, in context of a list is the rest of the element beside the first one, right? So it's like, give me all the elements except the first one. That's how could it work in list. And it's really obvious, right? So we can actually chain these functions together like however we want. For example, actually this is not going to work. If we do car of the cuder x2, we're going to get two back, right? How it works is that cuder x2, as we saw earlier, returns a list of two entry and car of that would be two, right? or the cuder of that would be a list that contains only three. That's because the final uh, console has nil as the tail here, right? Um, there's like other functions uh, in this family. There's like, I don't know actually how to pronounce them, C-A-D-R or CAD or whatever. Like if we do C-A-D-R of X3, it returns two. How it works is that it returns the car of the cuder, right? So there's even uh, C A A D R X three or actually yeah, it doesn't work. It should be C A D D R. Yeah, right. It's like the car that A kind of is a reference to car of the cuder of the cuder of x3 you know you, uh, there's like a few levels of this convention that you can use um there's like other useful functions like but last if i'm not mistaken let's see yeah that returns the list but without the very last element there's like tons of functions that you can use uh, with the list but these are kind of stuff that i mentioned today are uh, the bread and butter of lists you can see them everywhere um and yeah that covers uh, almost um, a wide range of uh, your needs with the list in the next episode, we're going to talk about two variant of lists, a property list and a association list. They're quite useful. We're going to have a look at those. And finally, in the seventh episode, probably we're going to talk about loops and how we can actually uh, um, use lists to iterate over the elements and do more useful stuff. That's it for today, folks. I tried to keep it short, and that would be what I'm going to do from now on. Um, long videos are kind of boring. Um, please, uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. It, it, it will actually help me a lot uh, with the content. And see you in the next episode. Cheers.